Okay, 70 things to do in Stockholm, the capital of Sweden, Venice of the North, and home of Oslo's famous Stave Church. Here we go. The very first thing you can do after you arrive in Stockholm is to take a SL boat from Slussen over to Jurgon. This costs just as much as any tube or bus ride in the city, this is just part of the local traffic system. It's pretty crazy. You also get to see pretty much all of central Stockholm by doing this, so it's a pretty good deal. And a good start to your visit, yeah yeah blood. Visit Stadshuset. This is not a very pretty building in my opinion. They could definitely have made a nicer looking place with the same amount of bricks, you know. But it is in every skyline shot of Stockholm, so probably worth a visit. And then go up in Stadshuset. The view from up here is actually pretty lovely. So it's definitely worth paying the 90 kronor and climbing the tower for the best view of Gamla Stan. And speaking of which, my goodness, take a walk around Gamla Stan, fam. The most iconic part of Stockholm. Whenever a friend of mine is visiting Stockholm, this is like the first place I take them. Just walk around here, it's lovely. Watch my video about it first though, to get the idea of which spots to visit. Wear authentic Viking gear and become Viking. Have your mother make you breakfast. Stay over a night or two at her place as well while you're in the city. It's really nice. Visit Sjö Historiska Riksmuseet. Pay 100 kroner and see a whole bunch of ships and shit. Don't go if you don't care about boats though. This is not the same as the Vasa Museum by the way. That's later on in this list. Visit Vasa Museet. Pay 170 kroner or 190 kroner depending on the time of year and see a whole bunch of ship and shit. This is not the Sjö Historiska Riksmuseet, that's earlier on in this list. It's really overrated this one actually, you can't really see the whole boat, it's a bit frustrating. But it is the most visited museum in Sweden, so worth a visit just for that perhaps? Flex your pretentious sphincter in the Royal Opera House. Even if you don't care about opera at all, just visiting this cool building is worth it, I think. Tickets can be pretty cheap as well if you book early and don't mind sitting behind a fucking pillar, you know. Partake in the most Swedish of activities and throw out the rubbish. Sort it into plastics, tin cans, things from Denmark, etc. Ha ha ha. If you ever want to blend in among Swedes, this is for sure the place. It's also a great place to pick up a Swedish date. Then why not bring the date out for a fun night in town? There are so many places to go for in Stockholm and just standing in the street can be good enough for most people. Having a solid night out with a vodka and a banana, you know. Or I suppose you can also have a drink at an outdoor seating place in the city. It's probably super expensive, but I love sitting with a drink watching people walk by. People watching with a drink and lovely company is harder to beat. Unless you go to Dramaten. <laughs> That's a segue. Yep. Dramaten is kind of like the Royal Opera House. Worth a visit just for being inside the building itself. Also, tickets range in price, obviously, but they don't have to be too expensive if you're out early. You can also spice the visit up a bit with a drink in the bar in between acts. Discuss the story you didn't understand at all, you know. Hermans. Jag säger bara det liksom. I've gone on and on about this place in many videos, but Hermans is really great because of the vegan food and the insane views of the city. It's a bit expensive though, so bring a rich date or something. Enjoy typical Swedish Christmas food bought at a Swedish grocery store. Add a pepparkaka if you want to remove the rails completely. Stockholm in the winter can be very nice to look at, uh, unless it's like slushy and stuff. But when it's just been snowing, it's usually pretty, kind of pretty, you know. Use this to your advantage and slither your way to one of the many woodland places available in Stockholm. And then in the spring you can take your trusty bike and take a ride through the same trails. It's really fun! Cycling in Stockholm in general is great, you should do that. I've been meaning to make a video about that for ages, but I've never got around to it. One fucking day. Okay, go out to the Skärgården and go for a swim. You can take either a bus or a boat out to the archipelago. If you want to go full Scandi mode, you can do this naked. Make sure to apologize first though. Try different types of food in the food market slash food festival in Kungsträdgården. I believe this happens every summer in Kungsträdgården. Here you can try a bunch of super overpriced foods if you're into that kind of thing. If you desperately want to feel young again, you can go to one of the many concerts held in the city all the fucking time. I think this one was at Södertheatern up in Mosebacke, which is a great place to go in general. Go to Mosebacke. It's a great place to go in general. Take a walk in a fucking snowstorm. It is not enjoyable, but it has to be done sometimes. If you are over here during the winter, even in the south of Sweden, your tits might freeze off. If you happen to instead be here in the middle of summer though, you can prepare midsummer celebrations with some Swedish people. Find some lovely looking Swedes and go through all the traditional dishes and have a couple of drinks at the same time and then celebrate midsummer with Swedish people. This is arguably the most loose and relaxed you will ever find Swedes, so make the most of it. If they start singing before doing shots, don't be alarmed, it tends to happen. Just mumble along 
it's fine. Connected to these celebrations, you can also participate in mating rituals to determine the dominant individual of the group. Every gathering does this slightly differently, but it is important to sort out the hierarchy. The winner gets mating rights for the entire next year, so we take this very seriously. Play board games. Swedes are in general very nerdy because you don't have to actually interact socially if you just play a board game. It's perfect for the Swedish mentality. I mean, with the right people, it's also fun as fucking itself as well. I'm not shitting on board games. Goodness. Go on a day trip to Uppsala fam. The train to Uppsala takes a bit under an hour from Stockholm Central Stockholm. And I mean, Uppsala is pretty as fuck. I used to live there for about six months. That was kind of a shitty time, actually, but it's uh, lovely for a visit. Go to a bar and have a Swedish storstark with all of your friends. Even though Swedes are known for being a bit frosty socially, going out and seeing people is important. Go for a swim by Liljeholm's Kajen. This place is probably my favorite swim spot in Stockholm. So if you spot me here sometime, don't walk up to me because I am uncomfortable in short pants. Visit Legumes Vegetarisk Restaurant slash Buffet in Södermalm. This area that I've also made a video about, by the way, is great for vegan and vegetarian food places, but this is not really one of them though. <laughs> this is not really good. I've just got footage from this place, okay, so here we go. But like, there are other really great ones around here as well. Play Smash against friends. Again, Swedes are nerdy. If you find yourself at someone's home in Stockholm, chances are you will end up in this situation. So practice before going, I suppose. Buy booze at Systembolaget and just drink alone in your apartment. This is very Stockholm for sure. <laughs> or drink with friends in theirs, fine. You can also go to a friend's place and do the same. It's way cheaper than the pub, for sure. House parties are quite common in Sweden, I'd say. Go for a swim at Engby Barlet. This is a lovely beach up in Engby in the north of Stockholm. Lots of Swedes brave the poop-infested waters here every summer, so maybe show up early if you want the best spot. Poop in the waters at Engby Barlet. Apparently it's quite common, as every year there are warnings of dangerous particles in the water, I don't know. Go to Himmelen and get shit-faced. If you do want to go out and spend way too much money, Himmelen is a great place for it. It's on the top floor of a high building. I think it's like Skrapan or something. It's got great views and I got incredibly shit-faced up here, so it works. You know, trust me. Okay, and then when you're inevitably hung over, then you should buy and then eat this fun. Now I know this is a very cutesy, vacuous and like basic bitch point, but I'm currently not living in Sweden anymore while recording this and I do miss this. Like my family and friends are great, but I mean the Swedish candy. Jesus Christ. Eat it for me please, because I can't at the moment. Go to Skansen, fun. It's great. There are cows and old Swedish buildings and shit. Tickets are 245 kroner during high season, so spring and summer, and uh, high season? <laughs> Off season? On the season? I don't know. And it's 185 kilometer off season, so the rest of the year. It's an outdoor museum on Jurgon and it's lovely. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about Skansen. Also, if you're there in December, you can freeze your tits off and go to the Christmas market in Skansen. I mean, it is a Christmas market, so it's what you expect with all the stalls and stuff. Make sure to find a hearth and scout out where the next one is before leaving the one you're at. Hearth hopping is essential. This was fucking cold, I remember. Take a selfie at Shibuya Sky. This is just such an insanely cool place. I can't recommend it enough. You see the whole city below you. It's incredible. Go look at the Nordic Museum, but don't go in because it sucks. The building is wonderful, also on Jurgården, but it's really not worth it inside. Don't go in, it's a waste of money. Follow me, another this time awesome vegan place on Södermalm. It's really close to Skanstull tube station and worth every krona. If you think that fake meat is awful, if it hurts your fragile manly little self image, you should try this still because it's so good. Go to one of the farmers markets on Södermalm. Usually when the weather isn't shit, there's a farmer's market not too far away if you stay on Södermalm every weekend. This is another cozy activity you can do if you're hungover. Bring the jävla lös godis fun. Join hooligans at a football riot. <laughs> Get drunk, go to a football game, or just wade through these crowds of assholes in amazement. Have a salad at Kai, not the Japanese language school. Is a little cafe on Swedenborgsgatan well worth a visit? You can sit outside in the summer and have the most delicious salad in Stockholm for like 120 kroner. Visit Drottningholm Slot. Oh fuck yes, even if you're not into the royals. And I believe in the monarchy and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. This place is awesome. Sweden's king, who coincidentally is also the brightest and most with it man in Sweden, spends quite a bit of time here, I would imagine. And so can you if you just stand around. And then again, if you're into Christmas markets, they have one here too. Woohoo. So you can visit that one if you feel like buying some glögg right next to a Swedish palace, you know. Maybe you're really into that. Kink unlocked and stuff. Join a march against men's violence against women. Do this if you're in the city on the 1st of May. 
Otherwise markers like these can be tricky to find. I mean, I suppose you can start one yourself, but this is way easier. Kimchi, a Korean restaurant. If you're into Korean food, there is no better place in the world than Stockholm, Sweden. At least this place, Kimchi, close to her toilet is pretty good, I think. Not too expensive, lovely Korean food. I haven't been to Korea, but I'm pretty sure this is where they got their cuisine from, you know. Ektorpet, a cafe on Yugon. This is like if you want to grab the ultimate fucking fika experience at an insanely cozy and lovely cafe on Yugon. A lot of these are on Yugon, I realize. I should have made a video about that part of town too. Damn it. Have afternoon tea at Villa Guthem. Guthem? I know what you're thinking. Is this a things to do in the UK list? You drop the ball, you little fuckface. To that I say calm down. Jesus. This place is fancy and lovely and well worth a visit if you want to posh it up in an old pippy long stocking looking villa. And then go to Skansen again because fuck it, if you're still on you, go and go back to Skansen and look at the cute fucking animals because yeah, your guy. Oh, ye large Skansen, she's great. Sit at a cafe working on YouTube videos. If you're a freelancer or a YouTuber looking for a place with Wi-Fi to work, just grab a coffee at any of the hundreds of cafes and work for a bit. You will feel bohemian and attractive. It's great. You can have a weird looking vegan burger at Organico close to Maria Toilet on Södermalm. Yep, another example of vegan friendly place on Södermalm. How shocking. It's pretty good though, this one. Middle of the road, sort of. Not as great as Hermann's or uh, the other one. What was the other one's name? It's good. It, yeah, this is this is, this is fine. <laughs> Have a fika yeah, out in the freezing cold. Swedish people don't let any weather stop them from enjoying a fucking fika. Yeah. This place is coincidentally really nice. It's all the way down in Hörkärringen. But if your Airbnb or something is down in South Stockholm, Konditon och Bagan, apparently it's called in uh, Hörkärringen, is great. So go, go here. Go for a swim in Hellas Gordon. This is a lovely swim spot a little bit outside the city. You take a bus from Slussen for like 20 minutes, I think. It's lovely, it's in a little nature reserve and there's also a lot of hiking trails and stuff around here. So dip yourself after a long walk, perhaps. Oh, you're what we Go to the old Orangery. Is that how you say it, Orangery? Close to Universitetet, kind of. Another great fika place, close to some lovely walking trails where you can see Hagas oh, lot on the other side and of the water and stuff, it's nice. Stockholm has got a lot of nature trails, like this one in Fagerkö in South Stockholm. I grew up in Stockholm, so I always took these places for granted, kind of. But a lot of you in the comments seem very jealous of these places, so go visit one when you're here. Have a jävla kanelbulle and coffee. I can't believe we were this far down in the list and I haven't mentioned jävla kanelbullar och kaffe, fan herregud. I'm afraid you need to experience this before you leave. Even if you shove this down your throat quickly at the airport, you can't leave before you've had a bulle. They'll force feed you one in immigration if you haven't. Eat ice cream next to ass. Enjoy the wonderful views of Stockholm from Stadshuset. A delicious ice cream and an equally juicy ass all at the same time. Sjätte tunnan! I mentioned this place in my Gamla Stan video, I think. But Sjötetunnan really is worth a visit if you are at all interested in Viking aesthetics, historical dungeons under the city, or just getting shit-faced on mead. This is the place. It's a bit pricey, you know, even for Stockholm, but worth it, I think. It's got a really cool atmosphere. I really like this place. Visit Gröna Lund and puke all over Riddarfjärden. Inte Riddarfjärden. Mälaren. Oh, fun. Stockholm has its own amusement park. That is not actually that bad. It's right by the water. I haven't been since I was a kid when I didn't dare ride anything, but I'm told the roller coasters are lovely. It's also just cool to have attractions this close to the water, I think. If the only thing that can make you stiff these days are nationalism and militarism, catch a changing of the guard outside the royal palace on Gamla Stan. They start their silly little march around midday, but the exact time varies with the season and if it's the king's birthday or some shit. Look at them, they're adorable, doing just what they're told, you know? During the winter months when the city is covered in snow, let out your inner child and play in the snow. Buy drugs at Sergels Tori. Don't spend any more time here though than necessary. I hate this place. It is right in the very like center of the city though, right by Tia Centralen, so I guess it's worth a visit just for that. Go for a swim on Longholmen. This is kind of a central swim spot on the little island northwest of Södermalm. It's not that great to be honest, but fuck it, go there if you want. I don't know. <laughs> is it? It is very central at least. Visit the Japanese garden in Bergianska Trädgården. Bergianska Trädgården, or the Bergianska Garden, is kind of close to the old orangery mentioned before, and it's uh, got a little Japanese garden. I think it's pretty cool. A little antidote to me being stuck in Sweden when I really wanted to be in Japan during the pandemic. Take a walk around Skogsjurkogården. Yes, this graveyard in the south of Stockholm can be kind of nice to walk around in. Maybe you'll find me lying here one day. I'll have my sub count etched onto my gravestone, so please like and subscribe, you know.
no matter what you end up doing in Stockholm, I hope you have a really good time. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you especially to Anna from Patreon for the monarchy line. <laughs> and thanks to the other patrons as well. I've got to go because Jesus Christ, I've been recording for way too long. Post fun. Yeah.